Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. mean lift coefficient okay this is just a definition mean lift coefficient because you know thrust which is given by number of blades let us say 0 to the whole thing dynamic pressure half rho u square or u t square whatever you take it then you will have the card and you will have lift coefficient I am not writing it in terms of uh, C L alpha and angle of attack I am just giving as a lift coefficient then d r okay. this is a very very simplistic definition you non dimensionalize with rho pi r square omega r whole square you divide both sides ok then you will get it will be written in terms of c t ok because T divided by rho pi r square omega r whole square is thrust coefficient and here this will become u is basically omega r whole square. So, r over r that will become r bar square and then you will have C L and you will get essentially this is equal to 0 to 1 and this half factor is there n c pi r that will become sigma sigma over 2 c l r bar square d r bar that is what the right side non dimensionalization ok because it, this you must know by now immediately write it. This assuming C L is you take some mean value some it is a constant everywhere and sigma anyway you are defining with respect to full dimension and then you take out everything this will become sigma C L over 6. Okay this is the some kind of a mean value because I am taking it as though it is a constant value. This will give me C L you may write it as mean lift coefficient or if you want to put a bar you can put a bar ok. So, that C L bar is 6 C T over sigma ok. Mean lift coefficient of the rotor ok and you know that C T over sigma that is the blade loading ok and this is given 6 times that mean lift coefficient ok. Now, why this is defined is we will go back and then define our uh, maybe I erase this portion because I use only this section ok. Our uh, figure of merit ok. Figure of merit is defined because last class we saw that is ideal power, ideal power is lambda over C T because lambda H is 
or lambda over or I use lambda i. So, you can take it as lambda i. This is for hover only and then you have a lambda i c t plus sigma over 8 okay. and lambda i for hover is root of c t over 2. Okay. Basically, what we are going to replace is this C t in terms of C L bar that is a some kind of a mean lift coefficient, mean lift coefficients for a section. Okay. Now, if you take out that lambda i C t divide everywhere and your expression will become let me write it this is 1 k plus sigma c d naught over 8 lambda i c t. Okay. C t you get it from here this is sigma C L bar by 6 you put it here you will get your figure of merit as 1 k plus 3 over 4 C D naught over C L bar and 1 over lambda i. Okay. See these are all modified expressions here sigma does not appear okay. that is the solidity does not appear. Earlier we said that if you want to increase the figure of merit you say you reduce sigma. Okay. But if you reduce sigma, your mean angle of attack will go up C t by sigma. Okay. Now, in this form, you have C d naught which is the sectional profile drag, C l bar is sectional lift coefficient, you can take it mean value which is a sectional lift. So, what this term, this form tells you is if a rotor is hovering if you say because the figure of merit I can improve if this quantity is basically small, small means it should operate at C L by C D naught at a higher value. Okay. C L over C D must be high. If the rotor operates at C L over C D high value, then your figure of merit is also high. Okay. Now, based on this type, there are definitions, two definitions, which I will briefly tell you the only the definition that is called ideal rotor. We will not be deriving this, this is just for your ideal rotor and optimum rotor. Okay, these are two definitions essentially. Ideal rotor is you have minimum induced power. So, minimum induced power okay. that means what you will have only when you have constant inflow that is this implies you have uniform inflow over the disk. Okay. So, you may put uniform instead of constant I will say uniform inflow. Okay. And this will give you ideal twist. Now, you see this is the ideal case. So, if you want an ideal rotor, you should have uniform inflow. For uniform inflow, you have to have an ideal twist. Okay. But uh, real helicopters, you know, you are not, they are not ideal because you have profile drag also you do not have only induced power, you have both 
induced and profile. So, both are there. So, you have both induced plus profile power. Okay. You have both of them are there and optimum is one which should bring down both. Okay. That means, one requires nice twist in the sense uh, ideal twist, but profile power if you want that means, you want the power to be minimum, but generate good lift. That means, C L over C D for a section, okay, sectional lift coefficient by C D naught, this must be large. If you have this quantity more, then yes, because I am reducing my C D naught that is the basically profile drag is also coming down, my C L is also high. Okay. Which implies I now this is a airfoil that is what is the angle of attack because everything Mach number all those things will come into picture in the real rotors. Now, usually you take the taper and twist. So, you adjust the taper and twist okay. because ideal twist gives uniform inflow you try to adjust the taper these two parameters such that you get a optimum rotor. Optimum rotor means both must be minimum. Okay. This you can do it as an exercise or something like that, but right now I am only telling you that real helicopters this is only a theoretical part in real life you need to deal with this and whatever we have derived we never bothered about Mach number effects etcetera, but you need to have Mach number tip losses many things will come into picture. So, when they want to go for actual design they have to take every factor into account okay. that is why this is just given as a ideal rotor means okay, I want to minimize that means ideal twist you give, but that does not mean everywhere it is operating at a very C L by C D naught is the best. Okay. That may require a different condition. All right. So, this is just for your information that there is some definitions called ideal and optimum rotors. These are all for hovering condition please understand till now we have studied only hover condition. We studied uniform inflow, non uniform inflow please understand non uniform inflow whatever expression which we got that is very good, it is very powerful and it is being used even today okay. for research I am not talking about just for uh, hand calculations even in the research that expression is very good without that is basically relating blade element momentum theory in a differential element that is all. Then we define the power figure of merit etcetera. Now, this is all for hover of course, if you want to calculate the losses the tip loss etcetera etcetera. Now, I have given you a assignment in which I gave you various four cases of blade one no twist another one minus 10 degree linear twist another one minus 20 degree then ideal twist. For this if you use whatever we have derived you see I have asked 5 plots when you get all those plots you will know that what effect the twist really changes. Uniform inflow we want ideal twist you will see slowly oh this is what is happening in the rotor situation what is the pitch angle at various sections. Okay. So, I want that as a graph because that will tell you because this is actually a, you have to write a small 
computer code because you can't do by hand calculation every time. Write a small code, generate the results, plot them for a given rotor system. Okay. Now we will go to the next flight condition because we will divide as a matter of fact the whole course will go like this. We did the hovering, now we say climb and descend in only vertical direction. Okay. Once we finish this, then we go to forward flight because the forward flight is most complex problem. That is why first we do hover, then you do climb and descent. Today I will introduce the basics of climb and descent, whatever derivation we can give, but there is a lot of discussion on the climb and descent itself. Okay. When we say vertical flight, either it can go up or it can come down, all right. That is all. You say the helicopter is hovering, you are climbing. Now, this particular diagram, there are four diagrams I have shown. Each corresponds to a particular flight regime. The reason this is split into that is for ease of understanding. And finally, we will derive some expressions which I will be deriving and we will use them. Okay. Now, the climb which is the also called normal working state because we use the same definition what we used that is this is the rotor disc. Rotor disc is supporting the weight of the helicopter and the climb and descent are please note uniform speed. That means it is not accelerating or decelerating nothing. It is going with a steady speed. So that is why the condition here I have plot is steady speed. If you are sitting on the rotor what you will feel is the far field upstream. You will see the wind is coming with the velocity v and everywhere because you are moving so the wind is going down. This is outside the slipstream velocity is also down, but the rotor is doing some work and that is basically increasing your we will derive for this case also. Okay. At the rotor disc now it is v plus nu that nu is the induced velocity. V is the velocity due to the motion of the disc or the rotor and then far field downstream. I put V plus 2 nu, but then we can we will prove that that is actually 2 nu because V plus W you will write it is like this. So, this is so here it is. So, you have a here it is. V plus W, this is V, and here it is. But for this condition, but I have made the assumption, please understand that that nu, this is the induced velocity is constant and it is uniform over the rotor disc, it is uniform everywhere. Okay. And this is the assumption which we make and then W is also far field downstream it is like this. Now, if you look at this diagram, this diagram tells the velocity of the flow inside the slip stream everywhere it is in the same direction, everywhere it is going downwards. Okay. So, this is the first part when you are climbing, but only thing is the value of nu that may vary because that depends this is not the value at hover. Okay. The induced velocity will vary depending on flight condition, hover it will be root of C t over to lambda i that is the hover condition, but once you are climbing the inflow nu over omega r 
that is different value for that you will get an expression now after that. So, this is uh, this particular condition of the rotor is defined as normal working state because why normal means flow is everywhere same inside the slipstream and outside also it is in the same direction. Okay. Now, we will go to descent condition, but descent is split into three regions depending on the kind of flow. Okay. What we say is first it is hovering, it has just started descending, just started descending. Okay. That means what? I am reversed everything. The flow V from there, if you are sitting on the rotor disc, far field down, actually down means that is upstream actually, velocity is coming towards you because you are moving down. So, it is equivalent to velocity coming, but then at the rotor disc, because the rotor is still supporting the weight of the helicopter, which is equal to the T, for it to support, it has to push the air down. Okay, that is how the rotor is doing the work in pushing the air down, that is how it is staying. So, at the rotor disc, the rotor is pushing the air down, but from the far field, the flow is coming up. You understand? That means, this flow here and these are coming up, but if you look near, you have just started descending. That means, the velocity V, capital V is still if you say small, because you have a inflow, if you are hovering, you will get a value of inflow hovering. You started descending and your descent velocity is less than the inflow, okay. that means inflow is large, this is less, though I put the symbol V plus nu, because V is actually opposite, nu is down this is up, but nu is large. So, V plus nu is more, I have put this direction down, please understand, I have put the direction down. And then again, I simply blindly use the momentum theory that far field downstream is two times what happens at the rotor disc. I will put this also V plus 2 nu, I just put it, please understand whether it is right, wrong, that is a later part. Now, you see what happens is the flow is coming, this is pushing, this is called the, you will find one flow is coming, something is going down, it will go around the, this is the rotor disc, you will find a big vortices will form. Okay. And then they will, once the strength becomes, the vortex become big, then it will detach and it will go up, again another one will form. That is why these things will, that means the flow inside the slipstream what you have, it is not in all in one direction, it is going to be a mixed flow. And this is the condition when you are descending down into your own wake, basically because you are pushing the air and you are going into that. In the sense the flow is coming up, descent velocity. This will create lot of vortex around the rotor, this is called vortex ring state, but you see V is negative, negative in the sense because it is coming up, but V plus nu is positive down, V plus 2 nu is also positive which is down, okay. whereas here all the quantities are positive, everything is down, all right. Here one is up, other two are down. Now you see in this state the helicopter will have lot of vibration because the vortex will come with detach. If you sit in a helicopter when the pilot is actually coming down, comes vertically down, this is shown as vertically down, even sometimes when he comes at some angle, you will find the whole thing will that, that, that you know, lot of vibration will be there. Now this state the flow is still downwards at the rotor disc. Now, let us increase our descent velocity a little more. Okay. When you increase the descent velocity more, 
v is negative, but v plus nu that means at the rotor disc my inflow is down, but the descent is more the net value is still positive up that means my nu is less than v. So, at the rotor disc I am now having the flow up, but far field far field is still because that is 2 times the nu I am always taking it as an assumption that will be down. Okay. So, at the rotor disc I have reached, but you see now between this state and this state V plus nu positive that means the flow at the rotor disc is down. Here V plus nu negative flow at the rotor disc is up that means there is a condition at which there is no flow at the disc. Okay. There is no flow. Now we had seen earlier when we defined the power we wrote three terms power p climb power climb power induced and then power profile drag. Okay. This is thrust into velocity climb, this is thrust inflow plus of course, this you leave it you p p d that let it keep it as it is. This is t into v climb plus nu and I have not used the subscript here v is the velocity. Now, when v climb plus nu or v plus nu that velocity term when that is 0 that means my power is 0, but I am still supporting the weight please understand power means the induced power I do not supply any power I do not require power, but I will be able to support my helicopter okay. that is between these two states that is the boundary line because v plus nu positive you come here v plus nu negative. And in this state you see the flow here is up here also is up, but this flow is down you will have circulation, but you will in the wake wake means above the rotor. And that is called turbulent wake state that particular condition and the vibration will not be as high as this state here you will have a lot of vibration okay low frequency vibration you will see the whole thing shaking if you sit inside then you will know in the helicopter then you will see this is shaking here it may not be as severe, but still the flow is turbulent in the wake. Now you extend you descend still faster and that is the flow here, here, here everywhere is in the same direction v, v plus nu, v plus two nu. Now v plus nu is up thrust is down that means actually you are generating power from the flow to the rotor. Earlier you supply power to the rotor to support the weight and the power you supply to the rotor to support the weight slowly will decrease with descent velocity and at a particular condition where v plus nu 0 you do not need to supply any power, but you will support the weight please understand. Now you descend faster you will start generating power and that is the windmill condition that is why the windmills what you have because there the wind is flowing it is generating power you need to generate power from the wind you do not rotate the rotor because then you are supplying power actually the wind itself supplies the power to rotate it and then that rotation is taken for electricity generation. Now you see this is called windmill brake state 
ok. Here the flow down at the rotor disc far field everywhere in the same direction. This is you see similar to the climb only thing is everywhere the flow is same. Now these are basically the states for any rotor operating in climb bar descent ok. This is just for very simplistic thing. Now I have written here just for the sake of understanding this is the induced and climb the power required for climbing and induced. When that power is 0 that is called auto rotation but actually you will find in real situations auto rotation it is a little different that we will learn that because this you have to know ok. That means I do not require power to support my weight but that does not mean that I am hovering please understand I am coming down ok. So, the loss of potential energy is actually converted into the kinetic energy in spinning ok. Suppose if more is converted it will start spinning faster ok, we do not want that situation that is why this condition is very very important in uh, helicopters because it is called auto rotation in case of engine failure because you are rotating engine fails because of its inertia what will happen is it will start it will still rotate but then the drag force is acting you are not supplying any power then what will happen uh, if you do not do anything if the descent is not there then rotor will come to a stop. But what you do is you immediately start descending when you start descent in the rotor but you do not want the rpm to drop to 0 and then pick up like you remember I dropped the seed it was coming down very fast once it picked up it was going very slowly right. Now this particular condition of auto rotation is uh, very important in helicopters because this is one of the design requirement and they also go through some training in case of engine failure how do you control the vehicle you design but you come but you will come with the velocity v down ok that is not a very small number but it is reasonably ok. But when he comes near he will be given certain instructions how to really save the vehicle ok they do that but it is not that they come and do not do every day they will do the auto rotation only at some altitude just for a training ok. But you can save the complete vehicle when they come near the ground there is something called a flare they will again go up that instructions once you once I derive something more then you will understand oh this is what it has to do but it is a very very interesting phenomena and we will show that a rotor in auto rotation acts like a parachute essentially it is like a parachute it is almost as efficient as a parachute of the same diameter. Only thing is parachutes are really big but rotors are not that big but it is good and you can save the vehicle in case of engine it is not that you will lose the aircraft. Only thing is there are restrictions ok how fast you will land where you will land how far you go there are many several questions related to auto rotation but we will not get into all the details but we will see this. But the key part is we need to know how to calculate inflow right because we said I have shown all these four flow states but I have to get the inflow through the rotor disc an expression as a function of my velocity of climb or velocity of descent. So we first assume but please note now what we derive today may be next class in this state momentum theory is valid because everywhere the flow is same direction this state momentum theory is valid you can get the inflow but these places there is no theory please understand you do not have any theory 
to get what is my inflow at that time in the vortex ring state or in turbulent wake state what will be my inflow yeah auto rotation is actually the boundary between these two this is this is called windmill brake state okay usually the windmills operate like this because see the windmills do, do not go anywhere the wind is blowing that's all it rotates right because they are stationary but wind blows from somewhere at the rotor disk and then far field back you understand they generate power because windmills are kept for the power generation okay now that particular flow condition corresponds to this type okay is it clear this are you what you are saying is hey am i not generating power here yes you are but this is in the helicopter you operate if you come with the descent velocity you normally helicopters i will tell you the moment you come to this condition v plus nu zero that means the power required to rotate the rotor is zero you don't need engine power okay of course if there is a profile drag you descend with that that will leave it assuming take it as the ideal condition you don't need engine power suppose you start descending faster than that condition what you are doing is you are generating power when you start generating that means the rotor will start going faster but your blade there is a limit of in the design you will have a centrifugal force what acts at a particular rpm i told you right at the beginning in helicopters your rotor omega is a constant suppose you keep increasing your omega what will happen your stress will go tremendously because for most of the blades for the operating omega the root stress or the root centrifugal force is of the order of 100000 newton now you double it it will become 400000 newton that's all the whole blade will start flying all over the place you understand so you don't try to descend faster the pilot is instructed to come only to that he is not going to generate power in the helicopter whereas windmill is a different operation this is just to indicate that the kind of flow patterns what exists if a rotor is descending like this he will never come to this state and this state helicopters will not try to operate in this way okay but you will find the momentum theory or whatever theory which we are going to is valid only here and here they are not valid actually there is no theory okay so momentum theory is not valid but we need to have some theory otherwise how will you calculate so that we will derive then there is an approximation made mostly in test and then they will draw the diagram and say they take it as some straight line something like that and then say okay use this for auto rotation that's all if somebody says what is the inflow you just say okay take this value that's all you can't calculate the inflow in auto rotation you have to have an approximate theory even some publications are there experimental test try to fit a curve through that and then come up because you see when the flow is like this what theory you will have because it's all going one flow is coming another flow is pushing down everything is mixed lot of vortices big big things and uh, flow is highly mixed flow okay no why it is shown like that is what happened a flow is coming from the bottom right and here at the rotor disk flow is going down it is trying to push the air down then what the flow will naturally what will happen it is like some crowd of people coming towards you here you are 10 guys you are trying to push them up and you are stronger in pushing them out then what will happen they will just go around you 
precisely that is what go around you and they will go that is why this is put like this but then again here they are coming so the flow will again come inside see in all these things actually the flow is like this that is why even if you fan you have if you take the fan and put it close to the ceiling you will not get any air you can try i don't know whether you have a fan or not put something very close to the fan above some surface you will not get any air in the ground because basically it takes the air takes it up and then pushes it down okay that is how the flow goes and it is idealized by this kind of uh, now is it clear what we will do is we will first derive the inflow assuming that that expression is valid for all conditions please note that i am making an assumption and then we will plot that result on a curve and that is called the generalized or you may call it universal inflow diagram okay and that diagram is used for most of a practical purposes okay so first we take the uh, situation of the climb because climb is that is why you see climb condition is always very good and well behaved and your theory is good and windmill theory is fine but in between it is not there but then you still use okay that is the i would say that is the beauty beauty in the sense because you don't know anything so you have to use something that's what the bottom thing is okay so now let us take the climb condition which is identical what what we derived earlier okay that is this flow is coming with v here it is v plus nu here v plus w and thrust is t okay mass flow rate we use the same mass conservation momentum conservation and energy conservation that is all only these three basic laws of uh, fluid mechanics so m dot mass flow rate is rho a v plus nu okay because v plus nu thrust is change in momentum from initial to final or final minus initial that is m dot v plus w minus m dot v okay because this is the final momentum initial momentum because these are rates so that is nothing but the force so this will be m dot w now you take power power is induced power please understand this is because this is a momentum theory we don't have any profile if i drag nothing induced power p is thrust into v plus nu because thrust is the force acting and v plus nu is the velocity there this is change in the kinetic energy here kinetic energy is half m dot v plus w square minus half m dot v square okay because final kinetic energy minus initial kinetic energy now you substitute you simplify this you will have basically what half m dot 2 v w plus w square okay now substitute m dot here okay and then you will have 
maybe I erase here, okay. Hmm? This is what m dot is, you put this, this is also what m dot w v plus nu. Okay. Now, you see m dot v w, m dot v w, they will cancel, okay. m dot w, m dot w will cancel, leaving behind the condition that w is to nu, that is all, because this you equate these two. I am substituting thrust is m dot w into v plus nu. This is in terms of kinetic energy, this is thrust into v plus nu. Okay. Now, when I equate, I get w is 2 nu, which is identical result as what we got in the hover. And you will find even in descent, it is going to be the same that I will show, but only thing is the sign will change a little bit there. Now, what is my thrust and the power? Thrust is m dot w, m dot is given here. So, I maybe I will erase this, okay. okay. So, my thrust is rho a v plus nu into 2 nu, that is all. V is the velocity of climb, okay. I take it V positive means it is up, if it is negative it is down, but I cannot use this expression immediately, okay. I will use later, I will derive for the descent separately. Now, we will write this equation in terms of hover inflow because thrust is equal to the weight of the helicopter. So, in hover, T is what? 2 rho A, this is there. So, it will be, I am going to use the symbol nu H nu h is hover inflow, inflow at hovering condition. Okay. So, you say nu h is inflow at hover. Okay. Because I want to non-dimensionalize the equation. Now, you see I can equate both because I am supporting the same weight. Please understand whether I am hovering or I am descending or I am climbing, my rotor supports the same weight. Therefore, this t is equal to this t. So, if I use that expression, rho a will go off, 2 will go off, you will be left with what? 2 rho a. So, I will have an equation nu square plus okay. you divide by nu h, you will have this Okay. You have a simple quadratic relationship in flow, basically non dimensional with respect to hover inflow. 
Now I can write a solution of this equation that is nu over nu h equals minus I will have plus r minus okay, square root of b square is right. This is the value of the, but divided by Now you take out simplify this because you take the 4 outside and then this will be V by 2, 2 will cancel out okay. and here you will put V by 2 H. So, you write the equation in this fashion, but which root you should use it because which root you should because this quantity is a positive quantity. Okay, because v over v is positive, nu h is positive. This is actually positive quantity, and this quantity is more than this quantity. So if I use a minus sign, all of them are negative. But you know that my induced velocity is positive. That means I must use the positive root of the expression. I cannot use the negative because negative if I put my inflow is going up. Now, we will write our inflow variation nu over nu h in climb is minus v over 2 nu h plus square root of Okay. This is the inflow. Now, if I want what is the net flow at the rotor desk, net flow that is V plus nu. So, at rotor disk, my flow is v plus nu over non dimensional because I am. So, I am adding v plus nu h v over this value. So, I will add the same thing here this will become now v over 2 nu h because the minus sign will go off because I am adding plus v by nu h plus root of same thing v over 2 okay if i want at far field that will be v plus 2 nu okay so i know nu I will be multiplying by factor here 2 and then adding v. So, when I multiply that v over nu h will cancel out. So, what will happen is at far field, far field downstream, okay. you will have v plus 2 whole square plus 1 that is all. So, this is these are the 3 expressions for climb case ok yeah oh no 4 yeah that is ok sorry sorry this will be yeah I am sorry yeah because I have to multiply by 2. So, the 2 inside when I take it 2 will go off it will become 4 yeah 
v over this 4. Okay. Now, you see this gives actually when we plot, you can plot v over nu h on the y axis and nu sorry nu over nu h on the y axis and v over nu h on the x axis. When v is 0, you will get actually value is 1 over inflow. As you keep increasing your climb velocity, please understand as you keep increasing your climb velocity, you will find this term is more than this and your value will start decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. When v over 2 nu h is quite large, you are assuming very large means then whether you add 1 or not, it really does not matter, okay. square root. You will approach asymptotically to low value, 0 value, technically very high infinite speed, it will become infinite climb speed, you will come. So, you will find that the inflow through the rotor disc reduces when you are climbing because basically you know that the mass flow rate you have increased. Okay. You increase the mass flow rate, I have to support the same weight. Since I have increased my mass flow rate, my velocity can be less, that is all induced flow and this same concept will come in forward flight also. So, you will find your inflow, inflow mean nu, please understand. That value keeps decreasing as you increase your climb velocity. Okay. Now, let us look at the descent part because the descent part is a little usually a little confusing because the flow is we assume this condition, but then we will apply everywhere okay, because I am taking because you know that my new is, is this clear because I am erasing this part. So, this expression later we will uh, use it for plotting. Okay. 